Hello fellow aviators, aviation livers and simulation enthusiasts, welcome to Pilot Dreams channels and today we're gonna learn how to do the CDU pre-flight procedure. Your instructor for today is going to be a real 737 pilot, that would be me. So hop on and let's start. Our assumption is that we already completed the preliminary pre-flight procedure and most of the pre-flight procedures beside the CDU. If you don't know how to do it, please check the links in the description below. So with no further delays, let's start with the CDU procedure. The CDU pre-flight procedure is normally done by the pilot that is intended to be the pilot monitoring for this flight phase. Let's turn on our CDU. Here we have the CDU in front of us and the first page we're gonna check is the ident page. We check that the model is correct, that it is a 737-800, this is good. The engine rating is also correct. There might be different engine ratings depending upon your company you're flying in. The uh, navigation data we check to see that it's valid. Over here it's not valid because it's a simulator but in the real aircraft or if you download Navigraph data for your simulation you can actually fly with the real data set. And we check the OP program. The little button over here on the right will always guide us to the next phase that we need to fulfill in this procedure. So we go to the position initialization. I actually did the position initialization during the preferred procedure because you cannot check your flight instruments without initializing the position. Just a short reminder how to do it, before you initialize the positions, over here there are a number of empty boxes where you have to enter the, your position. If you don't want to enter it manually, you can press the next page, press on near GPS right, get this message to your scratch pad, and then return to the page and press the button over here, this will enter your position and immediately it's going to become the last position. So today we're in Schiphol in Amsterdam, one of my favorite cities in the world. So we enter the position or the name, sorry, of the airfield over here. We can compare it to the position we've entered. We see minor differences in the last digit. This is because this is the position or the coordinates of the center of the airfield and the coordinates over here is our exact location in the parking spot. As I said, the button to the right corner will always guide us to the next phase. So the next phase is the route. EAM is already appearing over here, so we enter it in the origin. Our destination for today is going to be Frankfurt, EDDF. So I will type once in the scratch pad, but later on I will use my keyboard because I'm near the computer, of course. E or Echo Delta Delta Foxtrot. This is the identifier for Frankfurt Airport. We enter it in the destination, and the flight number for today is going to be. Boeing 738NG. We enter it over here. You can see there is nothing on the bottom right corner. We have to do something. So we press the departure arrival to select the departure runway and the departure uh, seed, standard instrument departure. So let's press this one. We have here EHAM, the origin, and EDDF, the destinations. We can see there are departures only for EHAM. So we press departures. We're going to take off for runway 18 left. So first we choose the runway 18 left. And the standard instrument departure for today is going to be Arnhem 3 Echo. Arnhem 3 Echo, no transition. You go back to the route. Okay, we can see we have runway 18 left. We go to the next page via Arnhem 3 Echo to Arnhem. Now we have to enter the rest of the route all the way to Frankfurt. So let's do it. It's a short route. The first waypoint is going to be Tebro. Tebro. Enter it over here. Of course, I'm using the keyboard, but if you will use the scratch pad, it's going to look like this. Next waypoint is going to be Charlie Oscar Lima VOR. We enter it here. Whoops! What jumped up? There are more than one Charlie Oscar Lima. How will we know which one is us? So, usually the first one is the closest one, and we can check also by the coordinates to make sure this is the right one. So, let's choose this one. Next stage is going to be Uniform November Oscar Kilo Oscar. Uniform November Oscar Kill Oscar. This is the next waypoint. And after that, we're going to enter the arrival and the approach for Frankfurt. So let's go again to the departure arrival page. Go to Frankfurt, check arrivals. We're going to perform today ILS 07 right. It's not here, so press the next page. ILS 07 right. And the approach we're going to use, or the star, the standard arrival, is not appearing over here. So we we'll press next. And we have it over here, Uniform Oscar Kilo 1 Romeo. We choose this one with no transition. And we go back to root. And we press activate. And then execute. But, did we choose the right track? So we go to the legs page. Okay, and let me magnify the map. And over here in the FS, we change this knob from map to plan. Now we will be able to follow the course and over here 
you can see this button over here changed to step and we can we're able to go or a waypoint by waypoint and check everything is correct first of all i see there is a problem with echo hotel 037 it wants exactly 220 knots while the in the standard instrument departure play the speed is below 220 knots that might cause some problems because if the aircraft is unable to reach 220 knots at that point it might affect the computer calculations so let's change this how are we going to do it we're just going to enter 220 below in the scratch pad and slash because it's going to be on the left side on the speed and we take this message and enter it over here 220 below confirm by execute and let's start checking our route we are at Inham and let's start following it step by step so the Ico Hotel 037 and then to Evlut and then to Niker, Arnhem, Tebro, Call, Uniform Oscar, Kilo Oscar this is the beginning of the approach, Ibville, Manov, Ramob, Redley, Iblus, and we see here a discontinuity. Let's enlarge it a little bit more. We can see a discontinuity in our route. We don't want this discontinuity. So what we do, we're pressing on Rubsa. It goes down to the scratch pad, and then here near the empty boxes, we connect the route. You can see it was connected, and then we press Execute. That's good, it's connected all the way to the ILS, to the runway and we can see also the go around to Delta 08A to tail and then to Romeo India Delta for holding this is look good, let's go back to the route, you can check it also here you can see departure via Ernam arrival via Uniform November Oscar Kilo 1 Romeo direct to Rupsa and then ILS 07 right and the Mr. Porch, of course in the air we might get different instructions but this is for the CDU pre-flight in order for us to have a complete rope and correct fuel calculations so as I said always the little button here on the right will guide us to the next step so we press this one and we go to PRF unit now it's the time to enter some data regarding the weight of the aircraft if you don't have the load sheet at this time you will have your briefing so you know the preliminary zero fuel weight Anyway, I know the zero fuel weight for today already. Let's assume that we received and signed on the load sheet and we know the final numbers. So zero fuel weight for today is going to be 52.4. You can see immediately the aircraft knows the gross weight because the computer knows how much fuel is on board. Now we enter the zero fuel weight and now the computer is able to calculate the complete gross weight. Next thing we have to enter is the reserves. So we'll use two tons. That will give us enough of holding time at uh, Frankfurt. And cost index will determine how fast your aircraft is going to fly versus how uh, economically it's going to fly. So let's use 20 for today. Cruise altitude is going to be level 3 to 0. So we enter 3 to 0 and we press it over here. And the cruise wind, this is the average cruise wind. Of course, you, might, you can enter later on in the legs uh, a specific cruise wind for every leg. But today we're going to use 240 at 45 knots so we enter it in the scratch pad if there is a deviation from the standard atmosphere or you know your top of climb temperature you might enter it over here and the transition altitude well for Amsterdam it's uh, I believe 3000 so we enter it over here again we press execute from here we proceed to calculating the engine data and the speeds for takeoffs again if you don't have your load sheet at this time you are unable to proceed with that but I assume that we already got the load sheet and we have the final numbers so I'm moving to the N1 page and from here you can use if you're a simulator player you can use uh, this page in order to calculate what you want but you can also use the onboard performance tool this is what we do in my company and uh, hopefully you see in the screen right now you enter all the data in the onboard performance tool so you can see the airport is Amsterdam 1018 left full runway conditions are dry we have uh, zero headwind the outside temperature is 16 degrees and the standard pressures we're going to use optimum rating I change it to flaps 5 because in the first one it gave me flaps 1 and we usually take off with flaps 5 or more with bleeds operating no anti-icing you can see the takeoff weight is uh, 67 tons and if you don't remember you can always press in it ref and see the gross weight okay this is the takeoff weight of course we're going to use some fuel during taxi but we're just entering the current weight it will give us uh, a safety margin and CG is 21.3 we press the calculate in the onboard performance tool and we get all the data so with that we, get, we got for today is the rate takeoff 2 
so we're going to use the rate takeoff too with the zoom temperature of 47 degrees this will also reduce the takeoff power okay and uh, we're going to use a full climb you can see the expected n1 is 87.2 in my application it gave different numbers but of course it's very sensitive to the 10 number you're flying and each rating for each aircraft so we'll continue with the simulator data next phase is the takeoff page okay so we calculated everything for flaps 5 so let's put flaps 5 make sure the n1 for both engine in the same cg was 21.3 this is the center of gravity in percentage and now we get the speed 144 for v-round 144 for v-rotate and 146 for v2 now press the next page button and we can see some data if we're taking off on a dry runway or a wet runway or skid resistance we need to change this one and you have it the acceleration height the engine out acceleration height and the thrust reduction height so this one is set correctly it's uh, what is called NADAP2 or noise avoidment procedure number two which means accelerating in the 3000 and reducing thrust at 1500 and engine acceleration height the procedure we are using in my company is 1500 so let me change it over here and now we're done entering everything and now what i like to do now although it's no part of the official procedure is go over every button and make sure that the data in the screen is set correctly so in it ref i check again the zero fuel way the reserves make sure everything is okay route was already entered and checked climb you can see your cruising altitude you can see your target speed for the climb make sure you have a 250 knots restriction below flight level 100 you can see the first restriction at the uh, evolute we're supposed to be at uh, flight level 60 according to the sid uh, and you can see your uh, climb n1 next page is going to be the cruise so as i said cruise level as we enter it was level 320 of course the optimal and the max are much higher but today we're going to fly at level 320 and we can see the speed this speed is set according to the cost index we entered if we change the cost index the speed will change as well and we can see how much fuel we're going to have at eddf of course i loaded way much more fuel than needed for today's flight but this is just the simulator usually we take just the fuel we need descent we can see the descent speed make sure you have a 240 knots limitation below 10,000. and on the forecast page you are able to enter the transition uh, level for descent the cabin rate of descent is not so important if you're gonna turn on the engine anti-ice in some level it will if you enter this number it will help the computer calculate the descent profile is a deviation and of course you can enter over here view wind speeds for different attitudes so let me show it to you let's say for flight level 200 flight level 200 let's say the wind today is going to be 220 at 40 and uh, let's do also flight level 100 let's say the wind over there is going to be 200 at 20 this data will help the computer calculate the descent profile and we press execute legs departure arrival we already entered no need to do it hold there's nothing here progress this is important we're going to check how many miles to eddf and compare it to a flight briefing so 242 miles that looks okay and we can see that fuel at eddf is going to be 12.5 ton which also looks okay and one limit we already entered all the data and fix you can enter some uh, fixes on the way that will help you let's enter a call for a fix and uh, give it a radius around it of uh, 10 miles slash 10 if we check the screen again okay and we go to call you can see there is a 10 mile radius around call the fixed space is just for uh, useful information you know it's the aircraft is not going to navigate to this page so let's get rid of the plan and the screen so by this the CDU pre-flight procedure is actually completed the uh, last thing you usually prepare in this stage is that the pilot flying is going to set the takeoff page so press init ref and then press n1 limit again takeoff and you will get the takeoff page let's shut this one down and the pilot monitoring today is going to be the first officer is going to be in leg screen and now the CDU pre-flight procedure is completed we entered all the data to CDU 
our aircraft or our com aircraft computer is ready for the flight. In previous video I already finished the pre-flight procedure and we did a pre-flight checklist. Of course, the pre-flight checklist can be done only after the CDO pre-flight procedure is completed also. Our next video is going to cover the before start procedure. Until next time, thank you very much for joining this channel. Please consider subscribing and give us a thumbs up and fly safely. Goodbye.